I got so many calls last Sunday. They said, girl, you should have cut that song off. That was my song. It was mine too, but sometimes you get a little short-winded, amen. But I mean, I just want to help me say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Because you don't have to do it. Because if he never does another thing, he's done enough. Amen. Come on and snap your fingers and you touch your feet and clap your hands along with us. This for you, John Hewitt.
you've done for me. Amen. Good morning. And our scripture reading will come from the 32nd number of Psalms. Blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sins is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture turned into the drought of summer. Selah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquities of my sins. Selah. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. O oh, gracious Father, we come. Yet again, thanking you for another day, another opportunity to come and lift up your name. And Father, while we're here this morning and while we're joined together this morning, Father, let us all be on one accord to worship and praise you in spirit and in truth. Father, before going into this service, Lord, we ask that you would forgive each and every one of us our sins and our transgressions. Anything that we've done is not pleasing in thine eyesight. So that, Father, as we worship and praise you this day, Lord, we will be, our praise will be acceptable in thine eyesight. So, Father, we ask that you bless those that had a desire to be with us this morning, but for some reason they couldn't make it. Father, we thank you for those that are present this day. And, Father, we ask that you continue to be that beacon of light for each and every one of us as we move through this dark and treacherous world. So, Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you and we praise your name like never before on this day. So, Father, we, we love you. We praise you. For these many blessings and all others, we ask and pray in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. dedicate this to my daughter Jordan loves his soul to Frankie Upshaw Pam my boy Anthony miss you and to Sister Doris Woodson and her family just keep lifting her up she lost her daughter last night but God is good amen God is good all the time If I don't
the best one they had. Oh, that's all right right there. Yeah. I don't know about you, but that's mighty all right. Praise God today. Amen. Amen. We up until the point of our service where we <laughs> come to God and give him thanks at the altar. So wherever you are right now, just bow your heads or go to God as humble as you know how. So let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, <clears throat> hallowed be thy name. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come yet again as humble as we know how before your altar, Lord, and coming in into your presence. Father, we want to first of all say thank you. Thank you for loving us in spite of all that we've done. Thank you for being the only true and living God that sits high and look low on us, your children. Father, we thank you for looking beyond our faults and still meeting us at every one of our needs. Father, we thank you for last night's rest, that you sent your angels down to camp out beside our beds, Lord, to keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger, and evil lurk that in the wee hours of the morning. Father, but your love and your mercy and your grace didn't stop there. Father, you reached down early this morning, and you touched us with that mighty finger of love, causing our eyes to open and see a day that we've never seen before. <coughs> Father, for we thank you for that. Father, we thank you that you didn't leave us where you found us. Father, we thank you that your love and your mercy and your grace still transcends all the errors and the mistakes that we've made. Father, we thank you that, that you didn't give up on us like we've given up on you from time to time. So, Father, as we come now, our first petition, Lord, is to look after those that are on our sick list. Father, we ask that you bless the Doris Woodson family, for they had a loved one to leave this side of life. Father, strengthen them right now. Let them know that everything is going to be all right. And let them know that you are that God that makes no mistakes. Father, we ask that you bless and touch the Reverend Jones family. Our very own Reverend Jones. Lord, be with him this morning. Give him peace and give him healing, Lord. You know, he's dealing with some things. But, Father, we know that you are a doctor that's never lost a patient. So, Father, we Come as a body, come as a family, come as a church family, Father, to pray for one of our members. So be with him, Lord. Father, we ask that you touch and bless Sister Frankie Upshaw and her family. Father, be with her. We thank you for the praise report that everything is looking up, Lord. After her surgery, Lord, we ask that you just continue to strengthen her and let her know that you are able to get her back up where she needs to be and moving about as she needs to be. She just needs to rely and lean on you. And, Father, we ask that you touch Sister Joyce Washington as she's, she's battling pneumonia this morning, Father. We ask that you be with her. Touch her body. Touch her lungs, Father. Touch her in a mighty way. Touch her in a way that you've never touched her before, Father. And cause her to be able to give a testimony that while she was down, you lifted her up. Father, so, so someone else can, can see that you're still in the miracle working business. Father, we ask that you bless and touch the Anthony Scott family and the, the Makai Scott family. Lord, we thank you for that praise report, Lord, that, that he's doing better. Father, we ask that you would continue to just touch that young man, touch that family, strengthen that family. For we, we don't know what your, what your plans are, but we know that you are able to move and cool scorching fever, Father. So, Father, then we come and we ask that you bless and touch the Johnny Miller family. Lord, be with them right now. Father, strengthen them. Let them know that without a doubt, Father, you are looking after them. And let them know, Father, that, that you are making things work according to your will and your way. And Father, Sister Cheryl Jones, Father she, Johnson, she, she, she lost her husband and now and her daughter. And Lord, and now she's lost her mother, Father. So we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would look down on her. Father, we, we know one thing about you. You know how much we can bear. So, Father, give her the strength that she needs. Let her know that we're praying for her, Father, and we're lifting her up to you, lifting her up in the name of Jesus, because when we lift her up, Father, to you, your work begins in her life 
much greater than it would have been if we hadn't. So, Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to pray for our loved ones. We give, thank you for giving us the opportunity to have a relationship with you, Father, to be able to come to you and petition things of you, Lord, that's on this side of life, Father. We thank you for that. So, Father, as we go forward, Lord, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that anybody else that's on the sick list throughout the land, Father, be with them and heal them and let them know that you're still able to do marvelous things. Father, those that 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 are that have lost loved ones or loved ones that have gone on, Father, be with them. Let them know that you have never, ever made a mistake. And you know how much these feeble bodies of ours can take. Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would stop by the nursing homes and the prisons and the jails, Father, and be with those that are there. Let them know that you remember them by name, Father, and go by the hospitals, Father, and touch those that are laying on their beds of affliction. And, Father, all they have to do is trust in you, Father. No matter what the outcome is, if they trust in you, everything is going to work out and everything's going to be fine. So, Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that they seek you and seek your counsel and seek your face. And, Father, as I get ready to come and declare your word, Father, I ask right now that you decrease me. Because this is not about me, Father. And I know that and I'm grateful that... It's not about me, Father, because if it was all me, there's no telling what would be done. But, Lord, I thank you that you have faith enough in me to use this vessel. Oh, Father, you trust me enough to use my vessel, this vessel that you've given me, to declare your word. And, Father, because of that, I will stand in the shoes of John, Father, and, and speak the uncompromising gospel. Father, because I, I want to be pleasing in thine eyesight and more so ever, Father, I want your word to go forward, to touch someone in this world and in this room, Lord, that, and have them come running asking, what must I do to be saved? Father, it's all about winning souls for you, Lord. So we ask and we pray that, that, that at the end of this service, Lord, that you get all the praise, honor, and glory. No glory goes to no man because no man is worthy of glory but you, Father. So, Father, there's coming a day where we won't be able to pray anymore. There's coming a day and there's coming a time, Lord, where we won't be able to see one another again. And Father, there's a time where we're going to have to hang up our hymn books and our Bibles to study war no more, Father. And in those moments, Lord, we ask that if we are laying on our bedside or wherever we are, Lord, in the last minutes or the last hours of our life on this side of life, Father, we ask that we will see you standing there with us, holding our hands, letting us know that this transition is going to be all right because heaven is, a, heaven is awaiting us. We got a home somewhere over in glory, Lord, and we'll be able to reunite with our loved ones that have gone on before us, Father. And we'll find ourselves around your throne, worshiping and praising you. There'll be no more goodbye, only howdy, howdy, Lord. There'll be no more suffering. There'll be no more pain. There'll only be joy, praise, and happiness, Father. So we thank you and we love you, Father. And we bless your holy name for these many blessings and all others we ask and pray in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We just got notified that our brother Malik Haynes is in the hospital in... Houston, Texas, Methodist Hospital, so we would also like to solicit prayers for him and lift him up and his family up in the name of Jesus and lift them up right now because there's so much going on, so much going on, and it's so, so you know, and it's, you know, the, the, the baffling thing, before I go into the word, the baffling thing is, is how people take it for light, take it lightly that, that they're going to be here always. It's time to get our lives right. It's time to get right with the Lord. And it's time to do what it is that God has called and, and commissioned us to do. And that's to be, be those that, that, that will declare the word of God and live that life. It, time is running out. Mm. Time is running out. And, you know, every sport that you play, it's, it's got a time limit on that game. You're only going to play it for so long. And life, in so many people's lives, it's, it's, it's a game. But I'm here to tell you that games come to an end. So we have to be real about making it into glory and do the things that we need to do to get there. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. So let us go to our word this morning. Let us go to our word this morning. Amen. Our scripture and our text will come from Mark chapter 5. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 20. Mark. <clears throat> Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Amen. We find recorded there in that first verse in the fifth chapter of Mark, it said, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken into pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee, that, I adjure thee by God that thou tormentest me not. For he said unto him, come out, of the un, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh a mountain of, uh, unto the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And for with Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the swines ran violently down the steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it, to, told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus, and seeing him, that was possessed with the devils and had the legion sitting clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they sat, and, I mean, and, and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when they, and when he was come nigh into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devils, prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit how be Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed, and he began, and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men, all men did marvel. Amen. And I want to talk to you this morning from the subject of from a maniac to a messenger. From a maniac to messenger. One of the things that, that makes me glad that I'm a Christian is that the Lord meets me where I am. You know, he meets, when he meets us, he meets us all in our mess in our, our pitiful conditions and, and in our dreadful and sad states of affairs. He, he does not ask us to get clean and then come to him. He does not say to us, get off the dope and then come see me. He doesn't say, leave that junk and then come see me. He, but rather he gets in with us to give us the strength to, to get out of our, our, our own situations. Christianity is always coming down. Let me make sure I understand that. God is, make sure y'all understand this, God is always coming down from his incarnation, you know, uh, in the form of a baby in Bethlehem, he was, you know, it was, it was all about him coming down. Dying on the cross 
was about him coming down to save and to rescue and to redeem us. But, but because we can't right now, we can't go up there where he is. We can't go where, where God is right now. So he has to come down where we are to meet us. And he meets us in the middle of our mess. Amen. Now, here's the thing. In our text this morning, I want you to notice something. For a moment, this man's about this man's condition. First of all, he was demon possessed. So much so that the demons had turned him into a raging maniac. He couldn't live in polite society because he screams. Go with me on this spiritual journey. With our spiritual imagination. Envision this man. You know, he can't be around people because he screams all the time. And he hollers and he shouts out uncontrollably. He's noisy and, 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 and you know, he, he's, 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 he's a bother. His family has grown weary with him. And, and, and they've grown weary with his antics. And, and his, the culture that he lives in no longer welcomes him in the polite circles because he's so unpredictable. He is uncontrollable because he is possessed with devils. The devil has him so that, that he cannot even live at home with his family. He lives out in the tombs. In other words, he's living in the cemetery. He's living among the dead. He can't live with his wife. He can't live with his children if he has any because he, he, he can't control himself. He's not invited to any social gatherings. He's not welcome into the temple or the tabernacle because they bind him with chains and fetters and the demons are so strong that they break the chains and, and, and they, 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 they pluck the feathers asunder. They take him out to the tomb and he comes back. They take him back to the tombs over and over again and he comes back over and over again because he's possessed with the devil. What a pitiful condition for somebody to be in. What a sad condition for someone to, li to live in to where they're constantly being tormented and people are constantly rejecting them because they don't know what to do with them. The scripture says he is untamable. Now, let's stay right there just for a second. I wonder how in the world, when I was reading this, how in the world... Can you get to a place where a man has to be tamed? How can you get to a place where you are untamable or man is trying to tame you? When we look at things that are tamed, a bear is tamed. They can tame a bear to do tricks in a circus. A lion and an elephant can be tamed. How out of control must a man be that he has to be tamed? Lord have mercy. They put chains on him. They lock him up with chains and the demons are so strong that they break the chains. And then he starts cutting himself with stones. Demon possessed is what he is. There are people like that with us this morning. See, a lot of people don't want to talk about that because you don't want the light shining on you and, she, and you seeing yourself for who you really are. We all have some demons. Amen? You know, we all have something that is holding on to us and that's keeping us from doing everything that we should do when we, when we should be doing it. You know, don't, you know, they don't want the drugs. I mean, you take, take, take a drug, drug addict. A drug addict don't want to be on the drugs, but, but the demons are so strong. They try breaking that habit, but the demons are strong, so strong that the Bible say until it binds the strong man. 
<clears throat> in other words, what the Bible is telling us is until you bind a strong man, you're going to stay in that condition that you're in. In other words, until you get rid of the demons, if, you, if, you, if, if not, he will come back, the demons will come back seven times stronger if you don't get, get rid of them the right way. And it come back seven times stronger than the ones that left. Amen? What happened is, you know, what happened in this man's yesterday? To drive him to the tombs. What, 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 what switch or, or click has been turned on or, or been, been flipped to make this man to where somebody feels like they have to tame him? At some point he might have, have been, have been a, a man who was upright. At some point, he might have been a man that was a pillar in the community. Something took place. Something happened. And then all of a sudden, a switch was hit. And then he has to be tamed. Lord have mercy. But we now find this man cutting himself in the tombs with stones. Screaming and He's running around with no clothes on. Uh, he, in other words, what they're seeing in this man is a wild man. Lord of mercy. Whenever you see someone out of control, I have to tell you that that ain't nothing but the devil. Because the devil will make you do some crazy things. We, we, you know, we, we, we're getting away from the days that, that, that I was raised in and, and most of us were raised in where, where parents knew how to bring us under control when we got out of control. As kids, we would get out of control, but our parents had a way of bringing us back under control. And I wish I had somebody here who wasn't scared of their parents, you know, I mean, scared of their children this morning. And they would tell that boy, that girl, you need to sit down and shut up and, and, and hush before it gets bad for you. See, your children ought to know when you're playing with them. <laughs> they ought to know when you're serious. Because... You are the one that have to bring them under control. There, 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 there's somebody that, that, that needs to know that, that you are the parent. And that child is the child. I don't care how old they are. One thing about mine. I don't care how old my kids get. As long as I got strength, they'll get backhanded if they get out of hand. See, I, you know, and a lot of people say, well, you know, well, Kurt Franklin shouldn't have went off on, I would have went off on mine too. That's it. I, I don't, I'm telling you, I would have went off on mine too if, I, if, if I'm doing everything I can to, yeah. to help you and then you disrespect me like that. You, you, you deserve to be spoken in the, to in the language that you understand best. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my mother real quick here. My mother, she was a short and stature woman. All of her children were taller than her. All of us were taller than her. But when my, when my mama got ready to get some act right in the house or, or call the house to order, we all, we all had to look at her face and, and, and we would hear it in a soft tone that mama was not playing. You know, she didn't have to do all that yelling and screaming. She would just say, all right. And we knew. If mama was walking through the house and she was walking hard and she didn't have that beautiful smile on her face, everybody walks off. Now, what this mean, what, what this meant to us is that, is that mama had, has spoken when she would do the things that she did. She would it let us know that mama had spoken and she was, she was not going to say another word. And then she would say, I'm not going to say it again. When she would say that, and it would, even if she would, you know, in, in, the, in the manner that she would say it in, she would be so calm, even in her calm state, when she'd say, I'm not going to say it again. We knew that mama wasn't playing. We knew that if we did something else, we're going to see stars, and then we're going to be on our back looking up at the ceiling wondering how we got there. Because mama didn't play. But she loved, and she loved hard. Even being a grown man and, and grown women, my sisters, with children, mama still knew how to call her house to order. When, you know, when we, when we, we, we knew when, when, she was, when she was playing and when she was serious because she was in control. She, she, would, she, would sit, she would still let us 
know that she, that she would still let us know that no matter how grown we were, we were we not, we not, we not too big to get popped upside the head. And, and she was still letting us know that she was still that shack bully. In other words, she was still the bully in that house. In other words, she was the one that gets some act right in that house. I have to tell you, there were times when all five of our children, all five of us, might have said in our minds after being grown and emphasized on the, the, the thing is, in our minds, we said this. You know, I'm grown, I'm a grown man, or I'm a grown woman. But the words would never come out of our mouth. But, but the only thing when would come out of our mouth when mama would get some act right was, yes, ma'am. And I wish I had someone that, who know what I'm talking about this morning. Somebody to know when mama is not playing any longer, when she's serious and when she's real about it. But see, the thing about it is when, you're, when you need to get control of someone or when somebody's out of control, that you, you, you have to establish that early on to where when it's time to get control, it's not a debate. You don't have to debate with this person about anything. Because in that house, there had, there had to be some control. And if God is not in the house, demons will come seven times stronger and take over the house and control everybody and everything that goes on in that house. Now what we got to understand is this man's condition left him in the tombs, cutting himself with stones, screaming with no clothes on. But, but Jesus, Lord have mercy. But then Jesus doesn't just happen to come by there. I want y'all to understand that, that he, was, he was passing by there and he was passing on his way through their own purpose. Now look in verse 1 through 7. When you read verses 1 through 7, the man is wild and out of control and he's untamable in the tombs with no clothes on, cutting himself with stone, screaming and bleeding all over the tombs. For from, 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 from verse 7, I mean 1 through 7, he's a wild man in need of being tamed. But then Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up and, and when Jesus shows up, a difference is made. See, I don't know about you this morning, but a lot of people try to make differences on their own. But I'm here to tell you, once Jesus show up or you allow Jesus to come into your situation... There is a difference that will be made. There's a difference that will take place. In other words, there's a change that's about to take place in your life when you let Jesus come in and be the orchestrator of your situation. Yeah, yeah. Lord have mercy. But now when we look at verse 8 through 18, <clears throat> we have to see that 1 through 7 tells us that this man was in a sad condition. But then starting in verse 8, he encounters Jesus and he moves from a sad condition to a Savior's conversion. Now, when he sees Jesus, look what happens. The demons start screaming. Now, I want you to get this this morning, family. Brothers and sisters, I want you to really pay attention to this and I, get, I want you to get this. And I want you to understand that the power of the Holy Ghost is stronger than the power of the devil. Even though the devils are in him screaming, he still runs to Jesus and worships him. It's right there in the text. The devils are pulling him back, but he knows that Jesus can help him. You know, so when the devils are pulling him, he starts running to Jesus to worship him. In other words, what the devils have been doing to him all along, the moment that Jesus showed up, the devils had no control. So it gave him, you know, he had an opportunity, a last ditch opportunity, a last ditch chance to run to Jesus. See, so many people are running from Jesus. So many people are running around Jesus. <laughs> But so many people have yet to run to Jesus and they're still dealing with their situation and they're still struggling within the midst of their situation because they are not running to the Redeemer. They're not running to the Savior. They're not running to the one that will make a way out of no way. They're running from or running around or running in the area somewhere, but yet to run to Jesus. Now, there are some folks this morning with us. That the pull of Satan is strong in your life. But yet, you got sis enough to come to church every Sunday. 
Yet you got sense enough to say, you know, I, I'm dealing with some issues, but I'm going to go somewhere that one of these days the power of God is going to deliver me from whatever's got me held and bound. You got sense enough to go to church on Sunday morning. Because no matter what the devil has you tangled up in, the Holy Ghost can set you free. You know, I need somebody who's been set free of your habits, your addictions, your problems, your sickness, and, you know, from your hangups, from your issues and from your mess to testify and worship with me this morning. Because had it been, had it not been for Jesus, there's no telling where you would be. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Lord have mercy. But here we are. The Bible tells us whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Now once you've been set free, you don't care who's sitting by you. <laughs> you don't care what they say about you after church. It doesn't bother you how they look upside your head or look at you when you stand up and give God praise. You don't care how much people will, will, will talk about you. You know, they, you don't care about how they hunched. Y'all well, know how it was when we in church. When sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so got happy, somebody was nudging or hunching somebody saying, look at him, there they go again. See, when you know what God has done for you, you don't worry about what they do. Lord have mercy. Yes, you know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the type of person, I'm going to tell you, yeah, I'm going to shout. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to make all kinds of noise because I, I, I've been set free. In other words, when I was lost and, and, you know, couldn't find my way, God came in and he became that light that I needed. And he set me free of all the things that had me bound. See, I've set free. God has delivered me from, you know, what your definition of me is. See, people got a way of putting a definition on you. <laughs> They want to define who you are and they want to define what you are. Like in verse 7, they defined this man and they looked at this man and they said this man is a maniac. They looked at him and they said he is, uh, 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 he's a problem. But in verse 8, since I met Jesus, my life has changed. I'm no longer the same. This is what this man is, is, is taking place in this man's life. He's no longer the same. The demons in him said, whatever I have to do with you. Son of the Most High, I implore you, I adjure uh, thee. You know, you know, is what it says in the King James Version. That you would leave me alone. Don't torment me. In other words, look at how evil works. Evil will torment somebody. Evil people will try to hurt people. You know, good people, they'll try to tear their name down. They'll try to scandalize their name. They'll do everything in their power to hurt them. But oh Lord have mercy when God shows up and the shoes start to get on the other foot when, they, when you don't look the first thing they want. Give me mercy. Look at what the devils are saying. Don't torment me. <laughs> that's, now that's just like the devil. See, the devil won't, <laughs> the devil makes you want to Hug your habits. He makes you want to stay in your addiction. Because listen to me now. Sin wouldn't be worth it. Or sin wouldn't worth, be worth uh, the time it takes to get into it if you didn't enjoy it. Amen. You know, I defy. Let me tell you something. I defy the holy rollers this morning. I defy them. Because... You didn't, you can't sit here and tell me you didn't enjoy the sin when you were in sin. There's some people that have gotten to a point to where they feel like they, 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 they done made it and they look down their noses at everybody. They talk about everybody and they like, I don't sin. I'm, I'm better than everybody. But I'm here to tell you that everybody has been in sin. And it took something great to bring us out of sin. You know, the holy roll of things that, 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 that it wasn't, it, you know, it, they, they forget about what they went through. Lord have mercy. Everybody who sins enjoys it or else they wouldn't engage in sin. You know, everybody sin, who sins enjoys it for a season. Lord have mercy. Now, as I get ready to close here, the grips of the devil is holding this man. 
But the power of the Holy Spirit makes him run to Jesus and falls down in front of him and worship him. But watch Jesus. Now, Jesus is the spotlight here in verses 8 through 18. The camera and the lens is now focusing on Jesus. And it, and it has always been on Jesus, but, but it's no longer about the man. It's no longer about the demons. Because in verse 8, it says, verse 8 says it's about Jesus. When Jesus says, come out of that man, thou unclean spirit. In other words, Jesus is saying, since y'all want to talk, <laughs> I got a question for you. This is what he's saying to the devil and the demons. He said, what is your name? Since y'all want to open your mouth and y'all want to talk and beg that we, I give you leave and, and you don't, don't torment us or don't, don't torture us. Since y'all want to talk, he said, we, we're going to have a conversation. See, sometimes you got to have a talk with, your, with, your, with the devil or the demons that got you bound. You got to have a conversation with them and tell them, no more will you put me through what you put me through. I stand up right now saying I declare God in my life and you have no place. So at the name of Jesus, demons will flee. So I'm calling on you right now, Lord, because I need thee right now to make my situation better. So Jesus says, since y'all want to talk, what's your name? Now walk with me through the text this morning. Then he says, for my name is Legion, for we are many. Lord have mercy. Now, many of us this morning can't even give, uh, can't even name the stuff going on in our hearts. One day we're speaking, and the next day, and the next day we, we, we don't know how to talk to nobody. We can't even explain what's going on in our own hearts. That, 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 that I, you know, I wish I had somebody to help me with that. You know, some, some people, you know, you know they, 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 they get up and they, they not, they not, they not the person that they were yesterday. Lord have mercy. One day you're happy and the next day you're hollering, well, I done woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Well, I'm here to tell you sometimes you might need to go lay down and roll over to the other side, get you a nap, and then wake up on the good side of the bed. See, in other words, you're dealing with something. One day you're talkative as you can be, and then the next day you won't talk to anybody. We, we, we're full of all kinds of spirits. Lord, have mercy. We're full of all kinds of spirits that, that are legions of devils that, that are possessing us, and sometimes we have to stop and check ourselves and say, did I really just say that? Lord, have mercy. Did I really just do that? Did I really just think that just after, right after I left church? Did I really just think that? Did I really just do that right after I got through reading the Bible? You know, did I really just act like that after I got through praying to the Lord that he would give me peace? Did I really just do that? You know, it happens. And we need to check ourselves. We're praying when we are praying. And, and, you know, think about the times that you're praying. You're praying and your mind wanders. In other words, it wanders from where you're praying and it goes somewhere else. And then you would have to stop and we have to ask ourselves, did our minds just go over there? Somebody know what I'm talking about this morning. You got things on your mind and you're praying. Say, Lord, I'm going to give you my devotional time. I'm going to pray, Lord. I'm going to talk to you. Then all of a sudden, your mind skips and it goes somewhere else. <clears throat> Lord, have mercy. But if you are stronger than me, praise God, bless you. Because there are times where I'm praying and my mind goes somewhere else. But if you're stronger than me and that don't happen to you, God bless you. If you got it all together, hallelujah in you, for your name. But there's some of us that are still struggling, trying to put one foot in front of the other because we recognize that we have so many different personalities going on in our life that sometimes we don't even know who we are ourselves. But thanks be to God that Jesus had, you know, came to, to set us free. Lord have mercy. And as I close, when the devil has you, you don't even know how people look at you. You don't even know what they see when they look at you. But, but when Jesus has come to you, you look at yourself and he, he shows you who you really are in the mirror. 
That's why so many people don't want to give their life to Christ because they don't want to see who they really are. They don't want to really see what they look like in the eyes of God. Well, I praise God that he showed me and I broke down and I cried and my heart was hurt because I couldn't believe that I was that person. I couldn't believe that I was doing those things. I couldn't believe that he would still yet love me even when I was in the midst of doing the things that I was doing. Praise be to God. And you see yourself as that person that, you know, when, you, when God showed that mirror, put you in front of that mirror, you see yourself as that person that want to cuss people out. Come on, let's be real. You see yourself as that person that loves talking noise about folks. You see yourself that, as that person that loves to start mess and create problems in everybody else's life. You know, you, know you, you see yourself as that person who loves lying when the truth would just simply do. This will cause you to see your own personality. And when you see that you are not like him, something's got to change. Lord have mercy. For in verse 8, he says, for he says unto them, come out of him. Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Verse 9, and he, he asked and said unto him, you know, uh, what is thy name? And they answered and said, my name is Legion, for we are many. The Bible says that the demons said, don't make us leave. But Jesus said, come out. See, some of you are, are being held back and, and, and the demons are saying, I don't want to leave you. And you, you're, you, 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 you're saying, I, I, I want you to leave, but I don't know how to get you to leave, but you won't call on Jesus. Lord have mercy. So they say, instead of just destroying us, send us into the swine. Now listen, the devil tries to make you believe that he's, he's got all the power. But, but whatever he wants to do, he, he, he's got to ask God for permission. Lord have mercy. Yeah, some of y'all may have caught that and some of you may not have. But I'm going to say this. The devil always wants you to believe and think that he's in control. But whatever he wants to do, he has to ask permission of God. Think about the days of Job when, when the devil was walking to and fro. Like, like a roaring lion, you know, seeking the home that he would devour. You know, now, now, now when he was walking, he, he, he wanted to destroy something. And, and, then, and then God asked him, where have you been, Satan? He said, I've been going to and fro, seeking whom I shall devour. And then God said, have you considered my servant Job? Now then look at the proposition that Satan said, yeah, I considered him, but I know you won't let me get him, but if you if you if you take your hedge of protection from around him, I, I, I'm gonna make you a deal. I guarantee I'll make Job curse you and die. Lord have mercy. The devil always making a deal. You know, he's trying to let you know, but the scripture says that Jesus gave him leave, the demons leave, and they entered into the swine and they ran bodily down the hill and, 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 and they, they ran down a cliff and they drowned. They jumped off the cliff and drowned. And now the camera is back on the man. Now, when I, in, the, in the beginning, the camera was on the man in, in his man, manic state or in his wild man state. Then in verse 8 through 18, it turns on to what Jesus was doing for that man, the change that Jesus was making in that man's life. Now the, 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 the lens has shifted back to the man. Now, pay attention to this. After meeting Jesus, he's clothed and then he's in his right mind. Look what happens. Now pay attention. The, the, while he's wild, nobody's afraid of him. If you look at the scriptures, the scripture is telling, telling you this. When he was a wild man, nobody was scared of him. What would they do? They wouldn't run from him. They would run to him and they would chain him up and they put fetters and chains on him. They would chain him up and then they would take him back to the tombs. They weren't afraid of him. But look at how people are. When people don't understand what God is doing, when people don't understand how God is working, when people don't understand the God that we serve, they, they, when they don't understand the wet working powers of God, it Throws them for a loop. Now look what happened. And this is in the scripture. As I get ready to close, this is in the scripture. But, 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 but they weren't afraid of him in the beginning. But now that he's sitting there clothed and in his right mind, the scripture tells us 
They were afraid of him. <laughs> See, it's something about when God saves you. It's something about when God heals you. He gives you an aura. There's an aura about you and power that surrounds you that the devils around you have to get out of your way. See, that's why it's always good to be in the spirit of the Lord because the spirit of the Lord will protect you from all evil that's coming from everywhere. Because there's somebody, I mean, there's something about a real and authentic child of God that, that makes you respect him. Now, I don't know where you are. I don't know what you've been through. Just like you don't know where I am and you don't know where I've been through. I don't know your story. And because we've had demons that we've had to deal with, when you call on Jesus, he made it all better. Wherever you are right now, I want you to move any distraction away from you at this very moment. And I want you to look to heaven right now and say, Lord, I've made mistakes in my life. And I want you to say, Lord, I, 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 I've done some wrong in my life. But Lord, I don't no longer want to be engaged in the wrongdoings of life. I want, to, I want to get it right because in your word, you've told me that tomorrow is not promised. And then you also told me that no man knows the day nor the hour that the Son of Man shall return. And Father, you let me know that I don't even know how many more days I have. I don't know how many more breaths I'll take on this side of life. Then tell God, say, God, if, if today is my last day on earth, remember me like you remember that thief that's on the cross that said, Lord, Remember me when thou get to paradise. And then Jesus tells him, he said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. You know what, Lord, I want to get it right. I repent of my sins, but I can't make it without you. Because today is your day to get it right. And if you don't get it right, I'm here to tell you that hell will be your home. Separated from Christ and, and God our Father for eternity. But you can get it right today. All you have to do is accept him as your personal Savior. Believe that he hung, bled, and died on the cross. Confess it with your mouth. Believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says, thou shalt be saved. Only you can get it right. It's your day. God bless you. Come on, Anthony. I want God
good. Amen. We got a quick announcement. Uh, uh, next Sunday we will not be having service next Sunday. We'll be back the following service. So, um, so if you're looking for us on Facebook, we won't be there, and uh, we'll be we'll be closed that Sunday. We have things to take care of. Amen. Amen. Um, so until not the twentieth, but the twenty seventh. <laughs> may God bless you. May God keep you. And we will be back and lifting up the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us go ahead and go into our benediction and be dismissed. Bless you.